Welcome. Today's session is referencing data pages and tables. In this introductory webinar, we're going to explore all things related to bar charts, hundreds of data pages, how to navigate them, sort them, view them, customize them, and to bring them to life. Hello, everyone. My name is John Rowland, and today we're going to look at everything data pages. So to help me along our way today is my partner and our moderator. To help me answer a lot of your questions is Jean Baker. Hello, Jean. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, we were just talking about Thanksgiving. Both of us didn't have a big Thanksgiving meal, so I don't, I don't have that tryptophan <laughs> leftovers. You know what I mean? Right, right. None, none of the turkey hangover here. Oh, exactly. So I know you're excited about this subject matter because a lot of viewers always ask about aspects of data pages, right? Well, it's the core of the bar chart website. If you visited the website and you navigate around, you come across all sorts of lists of symbols. And today, John, you're gonna break it down for everybody and even though this is very basic material, I think uh, all of you in attendance, I'm hoping are gonna pick something up that you can take home and uh, put in your back pocket and save for a rainy day for the next time you come and visit Bar Chart and you wanna navigate your way around and learn how to do all sorts of different things with the data that we provide you. Well put, Jean, excellent. So let's get started, right? Let's go. So starting um, by showing you that on bar chart, as Gene pointed out, is that we have literally hundreds of data pages to choose from, and that they run this gamut between, let's say, the stocks, options, ETFs, futures, currencies, and then even investment ideas. Now, these pages contain valuable and unique information that are related to the page that we would choose, plus some just generic or uh, generic defaults. So for instance, here is one on electrical vehicles. Let's go back to let's maybe a more basic page. Let me jump back to under the stock section, a price volumes leaders page. And when I click on the page, down here you can see how it's highlighted. Notice that there is a description right here and that will tell you basically how this page is created and how the page is ranked or sorted. And so in this case, it says it's ranked stocks by price volume, last price times the volume, divided by a thousand and this provides an insight to the most significant stocks based on the value of shares traded opposed to what another page we would look at would be our volumes leaders page now before we go deep into the page here i do want to start at the top of our bar chart page and i want you to notice that we have this little american flag here and if i am uh a user outside of the United States and I want to look at data that is unique to my markets that I trade, we can change uh, our default here. So for instance, if I pick European, then when I look at the data pages that are provided by Bartra, then I would be looking at European type of data. Also up here, we have contact. So if I'm interested in contacting Bar Chart in terms of any questions or comments about any of the pages or anything that is about Bar Chart, this is an easy way for you to contact Bar Chart. Now on every data page, you will find this icon, the help question mark. And if you open that up, this flap will open up and then it'll basically tell you about how is the page designed, what is included, how is the data provided to you, some additional filters, how to screen, data updates, 
sorting our views and some of our symbology. Now we're gonna go through all this. I just wanna point this out for you. It's a great reference, especially when you're looking at a data page you're not familiar with. All right, from there, down here we have also uh, this little box here. It says receive end of day emails. Now this is one of the benefits of being a subscription member of Bar Chart, either a, a free subscription or a premium subscription. So you can receive this email at the end of the day based on the data that is provided in this chart, excuse me, this page. All right, as I said before, here's our description of what this data page is. The next thing I want to point out to you is that there are different columns. Now, one of these columns on this main view, and we're going to talk about this in a second, is going to be the way this page is designed. In this case, this is the price volume, and there you can see price volume. This is how the page is filtered and ranked. Now, one of the things I can do at this point here is if I click on this column, it will change the ranking. Notice here, we go from lowest to highest. If I click back again, this is highest to lowest. If I click on any of the other columns, for instance, here's price, last price, notice that we have a random assortment of prices. If I click on that, It'll sort it by the highest price to the lowest, or I can go from the lowest to the highest. Now, if I sort on any one of the columns and I want to return to the default of the page itself, all I have to do is click on the column that is designed for that page, and it'll revert back to the default of that page. Now, if I don't know what the columns represent, I can just put my cursor over them and you'll get a little bit of a description of what each column represents. The other thing you might be noticing right now is that we get these flashings or we have these different color coordinations. So one of the things what the data pages will provide for you is if I see a result that is green, that tells me that it's a positive result. In this case, we look at change, change of price from the previous day's settlement, is telling us that today's price for Tesla is up by 1.66 or $1.66. So a green value means it's a positive result. If it's a red value, it means it's a negative result. Now notice though, as we are looking at our data page here, we do see some flashings. And flashings like the data page that I just talked about will also be red and green. But notice what you might see is a green flashing, which that tells you that the next price or the next data that was created for that had a positive result. That positive result will be based on the previous data point. And again, for Tesla here, we see a price here is 165. If we get another price change, notice it went green, flash green, and then it flashed red. So it positive up and then it negative down. And so you can, in some incidents, even though we have a negative result, you might get a green flash. And there you saw. So it's telling you that the result was a positive from the previous data point. Notice over here in volume, you can see that the volume is always flashing green. Well, as we know from the stock market, that volume never goes down, it always goes up. So that's why every time it's changing, it's a green flash. And this is, could be important for you in terms of watching uh, your markets. Now let's talk about some ways where we can start customizing or manipulating the data on these pages. 
So the first plot I want to point out to you is up here where it says all of US exchanges. Now, every data page is going to have different opportunities to manipulate. But in this case, what we can see if we open this tab up is I can look at all exchanges or I can look at just the price volume leaders for, let's say, uh, the New York Stock Exchange. Or I can make it NASDAQ or by market cap or even by price. The other thing that we have here is what we call our views. Now our views here, we're gonna give you on most data pages, somewhere between three to five default views. Notice we have what is called the main view. The main view is gonna just give you some basic information. In this case, you know, price change, volume, our column that defines our page, the time that the data was uh, created, and we'll look at links in a moment. Then we have our technical page, our technical view. And in our technical view, we give you just some basic uh, technical analysis. First, the high and low for the last 52 weeks, an average volume for the last 20 days, historical volume for the last 20 days, and our, our relative strength uh, indicator for the last 20 days. Uh, and plus, we have something called the bar chart opinion page. Now, this is a nice little feature that is provided in most of the data pages. And here, what it is, is a culmination of 13 different technical indicators. And then it gives us an opinion based on the common interpretation of those 13 indicators. So for Tesla, it's giving us a 100% sell. What it's telling us is that of the 13 technical indicators, all of them are generating a sell signal. So as a trader, this is probably telling me that Tesla is in a downtrend. I have a performance view. Here I can look at the return or the performance of the individual equities or securities that are on this data page over a variety of time frames, 52 week percent change, three months, one month, year to date, and something called weighted alpha. Now weighted alpha is uh, looking at price performance over a one year period where we give a greater weighting to current price activity. Think of this more of a performance in a momentum style uh, data picture. And then we have fundamentals. Again, just some basic fundamental information. Market cap, PE ratio, earnings per share, net income, beta, and dividends and dividend yields. Now for this particular, refresh, there we go. This particular data page, we have something called mini charts. Now mini chart view is a premier feature. What mini charts will do is going to give us a very small reader's digest type, type view chart of all the securities that are on that particular data page. As it's loading up, notice that we have all the different securities that are inside of. Let me refresh my page here. There we go. This gives us a little, little small little chart of each one of the securities that is on our data page. Remember, we talked we just talked about Tesla. You can see here Tesla is in a downtrend. Notice that I have my cursor here and I can find some data points inside of the chart. Now, what I can do here also is if I go outside of the chart, notice how my cursor turns to a little finger, a little hand. 
And if I click on the symbol, this will take me to that securities page, Tesla page, and the Tesla chart. Now, my chart has been manipulated for my, what I do in my trading. And we'll look at that in a moment. Now, if I want to return back to that page, I just have go over here in the left, click back, and I'll return back to the price volume. But if I don't want to leave this page, I can go back to the symbol and right click, and this will allow me to open a new tab. There you can see it on the top here for Tesla. And this will allow me to go to Tesla and go right back to my data page. And that is a kind of cool feature that you'll find through all, all data pages. But we don't have to stop there, not these default views that bar chart provides. We can create a custom view. In other words, we're going to manipulate the data or customize it to suit our unique needs and create information columns by your own design. So how do I do that? Well, I'm just going to scroll down here. At the bottom, you can see it says create custom views. If I click on that, it'll take us to our custom views page. Now I can just name my custom view, whatever I want to call that view. Notice that under my account, I have many types of custom views. So I could just type in something like webinar. And that's what I did for today's session. I created a custom view called webinar. And I would add it and it would create that webinar custom view. If I click on the custom view, then what I can do now is add data columns that are going to be unique to what I want to design that custom view. Notice I've already picked some out, some of them ranging from technical indicators and some of them uh, fundamentals. Where do I find this information? Through these groupings inside of these plus signs. You can see the different data points that you can add for your columns. And we go from just basic price information. to fundamental analysis, to technical analysis. So there's a wide range of things that you could put inside of your data page, custom view. But if I know what I'm looking for, then I can just come up here under this search spyglass and type it in. Here I've typed in beta, I wanna see what the 60 month beta is for these all of these stocks and then i'm just going to click on it and notice it adds it to my custom view now i can also sort this by this little hamburger icon i can move beta up and down based on how i want to sort or how i want it to lay out in my custom view now once i've added those elements and i've sorted them the way up make sure you remember to save your changes now let's go back to our price volumes leaders page here's our main view i'll open that up custom views webinar and there are those columns that i added to my custom view and this is a way to supercharge uh, using data pages, these custom views. You can see on my uh, subscription, there's many custom views that I use. All right. Let's talk about some other ways we can assess some data that it comes from our data pages. So underneath the symbol, the symbol of the stock, again, if I put my finger here, I can click on that and that would take me to the stock page that's unique for, in this case, Tesla. Again, I can right click and open a new tab. 
that will allow me to go uh, open a new tab for a test like I did before. But if I use this black little widget, this little plus widget, this will allow me to get some data without leaving this data page. And look at those different features we have. We have a chart, quotes, performance, again, a little bit more data, news. There's our opinion indicators, a little bit more technical analysis, key statistics, fundamental statistics, and so on. Now, I usually gravitate to the profile. And this is an easy way to get a little bit of synopsis about what this company does. You know, does it uh, fit into a category that I want to trade, or is it part of a trade idea that I'm trying to look for? Plus, it also tells you what sectors you might find this particular uh, security in. Now, on any one of these data tabs, you have the option to go to the full profile or the full chart. And this will open up a new tab that will take you to that chart. Again, I could just go back to the data page on that particular tab. Another way that I can access more data based on this data page is over here on the right-hand side, which is called our links, these three little dots. If I click on that, again, you can see that it's a lot of the similar things that we just looked at our more data, our quotes, our chart. Here you have access if the stock has options, you can get to the options, our bar chart opinion. But these three features I think are important to understand when you go to the links. Again, if I just want to uh, open uh, another page or tab without leaving this, I can just right click and open that tab. I can go to the Tesla opinion page. But what I want to talk about here is how we can add these to other data pages, data pages that we're going to create. And one of them is called a watch list. So for instance, let's say I want to add Tesla to a watch list. Well, if I don't have any watch lists created, I can just create a new watch list. And let's create a new watch list for today. We'll call this webinar. And once I do that, I'm going to add Tesla has been added to my webinar watch list. Come back into Apple. Now I can go and ask, add Apple to my watch list. So notice that it's not right there in front of me. Just have to scroll this down, and there it is. Webinar, click on it. Now I've added Apple to my webinar watch list. The other thing I can do is I can create a portfolio. Same thing, I can call that portfolio whatever I want, and then add that stock to that portfolio at a later time. Maybe I might add details about a certain portfolio that I have in terms of entering, you know, the cost of the stock or how many shares I bought. We'll look at that a little bit in a moment. And then the other thing that I want to point out is we can add alerts. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to look at signals that we want to know in terms of these individual securities. So, for instance, on Tesla here. I have an alert that says I want to know if the intraday price falls below $1.50. Now I can add any types of alert based on a multiple of technical analysis, just like I showed you in the custom views, price data, highs and lows, the percent changes, support and resistance, technical analysis, and even our bar chart opinions. I can set that alert to be on an intraday or just based on the end of day closing prices. You can also put some notes in that alert to sort of remind me what I was looking at 
for what I was hoping to happen. All right, so there's how we can get more data. So let's talk about some more ways we can customize data pages that are unique for bar chart. So right here we have something that's called the screen. Now I'm gonna open this up. And so let me talk about screening for a second. Now we do have tutorials based on how to screen and we're not gonna go into depth in that uh, today. That would be for another webinar in the future. But I will tell you that most of my Wednesday webinars that we do, when we feature one of these data pages, we spend a lot of time looking at screenings for that data page. But I just want to point out that if we screen on a data page, what the screener does, it starts from the information that is created from that data page. In this case, our most active price volume leaders. And then from that point, I can add different screener filters, similar to what we saw in our custom views. Again, a range of technical data and fundamental data. And again, if I want, and I know something that I want to look for, to screen for, I can just type that in our little spyglass search, okay? Flip charts is another great feature that we can use from our data pages. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert our data page based on the way our securities are lined out or how they appear to us on our data page in a flip chart, or in other words, a chart of the individual stock. In this case, we have Tesla was the first one on our data page, so Tesla would be the first chart that we will see. Now I can navigate this ribbon, think of this kind of like a, a ticker tape of stocks by one, clicking on them one at a time. Another way I can navigate this ribbon is I can left click hold on this little blue bar here and that allow me to scroll left All right, another way is I can come over to this arrow here and I can click on this arrow and this will jump, I believe it jumps five at a time. Or I have these blue arrows here, which I can go one at a time. Now on each one of our charts, just like we showed you on the data page, I have my symbol. Again, I can right click and open a new tab. If I want to stay on flip charts, but maybe look at Amazon. If I click on the symbol though, it will take me away from the flip charts page. I can change the settings of my charts. You have multiple types of candlestick, high, low, close. Maybe you're familiar with some of these other ones, or maybe even just a basic line chart. Hey, John, I'm going to jump in for just a moment. You were talking about different ways to navigate uh, flip charts. There's one more that a lot of users find very helpful. If you're using a desktop and if your keyboard has left and right arrow keys, you can use those arrow keys as well. So you don't have to worry about, you know, clicking the the, the blue arrows or um, using that ribbon at the very top. The left, right arrow keys will do it for you as well. Awesome, Gene. I love, love I always learn something new. Every time you come on, <laughs> I appreciate that. That's cool. All right. So, in my flip charts, we have a way to change our data in terms of time frames. Here we have a six-month charts. 
you know, let's say we want to look at one month, maybe 60 minutes. And our more data, we already looked at this. And tools, we have some drawing tools, trend lines, for instance, right? Now, a nice feature that BarJet does provide from being a subscriber is whatever things you draw on your charts, BarChart remembers that. And then when you come back to those charts, those drawing tools or those studies will still be on your uh, chart page. Excuse me, not studies, uh, all the tools that you would draw. BarChart remembers that. Another benefit being a subscribed member. Now, what I also can do is I can come to the flip charts and right click. And that'll allow me to access studies. And you can see we have multiple studies. One of my favorites is Bollinger Bands. And so the next day I might come back to uh, Amazon, it's going to show me with my Bollinger Bands on it. Also, some other features I can do if I right click, I can do a comparison chart. Maybe I want to see how uh, advanced micro devices here is doing versus the S&P. I also can change my displays, my scales. If I'm looking at a larger amount of time, maybe I'm looking at 10 years or 20 years, I might want to use a logarithmic chart. Or I can do a chart that's based on a percentage price change. Uh, one of the nicer features that I use occasionally is events. Maybe I want to know when earnings were or when earnings will be. So I can look to see if the stock had some kind of price movement based on an earnings event. I can set alerts and I can add to the watch list. Which watch list do I want to add to? webinar. On the right side of our flip charts, notice I have my mode. And this is just the way I look at this chart in terms of, do I want this white background? Or a lot of folks like the black background. We also have something called templates. Well, templates are kind of like custom views. You're going to, you can create your own, but these are going to be custom views that are based on studies. Notice here under my templates, I have something called the RSI stochastics. And in this template, I have studies that are based on RSIs and stochastics. Again, if you want to learn how to uh, create a template, we do have some webinars and tutorials based on that. The bar chart does, bar chart does offer you some um, default templates. One of the more uh, popular ones here is called the Golden Cross and the Death Cross, which is basically just the 50 day moving average in blue and the 200 day moving average in black. You can see it up here. Another thing we can do with our flip charts is we can look at multiple charts at the same time. I can look at two vertically. Notice it shows AMD and Microsoft. If I change it to Neo, it takes the next one. So I can't pick the two that I want. It's just the two in the next succession. Now I can do it at vertical, I can do it as stacked, and I can also look at multiple charts in terms of four at once. And again, on any one of our flip charts, 
the other access changes to get to our watch list. And I can add that to my watch list. Or if I want to set an alert, then there aren't any alerts for this one, but there is a way to access the alert page. All right, so that is basics about the data pages that bar chart provides. But as I was kind of hinting here is we can create our own data pages. And one of the more popular types of data pages that most of our subscribers will do is called a watch list. Now I have this watch list already preloaded. This is our S&P sectors watch list. This is my personal watch list. And I can change some of that data. Remember we looked at the all exchanges on the price volume, but here we can see for the watch list, I can get information based on intraday or end of day. And notice here, my view has, says performance. Let me show you how we can change that. But again, there is our main, our technical, our performance, our mini charts. And then as I hinted before, many of the other data pages that we create will have an opportunity to look at some other default views in this case we have a performance chart which allows me to look at the performance of the different s p's now i have here five days up and i could look at let's say one month fundamentals pre and post market it's a new feature that we just added And news, any news stories that might be related to those securities, in this case, these ETFs. The other thing I can do is I can put a edit notes. In other words, I could look at what is this watch list about or some things that I need to remember. And this watch list has S&P sectors and equal weighted sectors. Another thing I can do with my watch list is I can go into the edit. And inside the edit, I can rearrange these just like I showed you with the custom views by moving them up and down. Or I can delete them. Or I can add a symbol. Again, another benefit of being a subscriber is I can have that watch list sent to me. Regular users have access to end of day and premier members have an option of having the watch list sent to them through a variety of time periods throughout the day. And again, whatever view I choose will be the view that email comes. So in the case where I showed you where I'm using performance, if I wanted the performance email sent to me, then I would have to click on the performance. But when I pull that page up, notice here we have our defaults. Again, my default could be end of day or intraday. Intraday is my default and my default view. Here's where I can pick the view that I want when I pull that page up when I'm on barchart.com. And you can see I moved away from the site default, the main view default, to the performance default. And anytime I make any changes and I want to keep those changes, make sure you remember to save. And so now when I look at this sector, here is my sectors under the performance. So let's look at the webinar watch list that we created. We put Tesla, Apple, AMD, and Alibaba in it. Notice that right now, 
it has an intraday that was my default and my main default was probably my site default but let's use our webinar now my watch list has been customized for the data that I want to see when I pull that watch list up. Another watch, another data page that we have available to uh, subscribers is our portfolios. So here's a portfolio that I have based on the webinar we did in the beginning of this year. 22 stocks for 22 and then what i've done here is i just added a lot of different uh, stocks that we chose at the beginning of the year and i based it on the value i've added that up again i can come into my portfolio here and edit it based on the elements that i want to put in it uh, how i want to define them do i want this sent to me again notice my default here is my portfolio view where i have more uh, options to choose from. And again, one of the features that we can do for all of our data pages is I can download that data. Each user has an option, I believe it's 100 downloads, Gene, is that correct, a day? It seems, it seems like a big number, but I think that was the number I remember you telling me. For premier members, that's correct, John, yeah. Premier members, okay, thank you. And one of the other features I forgot to show you on all of our data pages is we can pop these out and make them a little bit more easily uh, readable. Yeah, actually, John, that, that max pop out that you just showed, uh, that's only available on certain pages like the portfolio and the watch list. If you Okay, go to the price volume leader here. You see there is no max here, but you can collapse the left navigation um, over the top top left of the page where it says stocks. There's that blue button. Right. So you can collapse that page. Like if, if you have a custom view that has a lot of different data fields on it uh, and you want to see the table and the data spread out a little bit more, you can collapse that view. Now, if you're a uh, premier member, you can have your site always collapse that menu for you. That's something that you can find in the site preferences. Yeah, that's something that I kind of do. It just makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, the pop out I did want to point out was in the flip charts, right? We can pop out there as well. Okay. So that's pretty much everything that I know about data pages. Is Gene, did I forget anything? Or is there any questions? No, I've actually been I've been busy answering a number of questions from from users. So if you do have anything specific uh, that we haven't covered in today's session, and yes, a lot of the information John covered is very very basic, but you know what? It's 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 knowledge that you need in order to really get the most out of the bar chart website and to get the most out of the data that we're presenting you so if, if you still have questions please email support they'll be very happy to help you yeah you know what gene kind of pointed out is you know yeah a lot of this stuff is basic but what once you get familiar with uh, the page and the data pages and the way you can manipulate that data it's really easy to find and search for those things that you want to look for. You don't have to spend a lot of time, right? You can boom, we go right to your custom view, or you go to your watch list, right? It's already there for you. And that's another reason why it's important to be a subscribed member, right? The benefit of being a subscribed member. And so I would encourage folks not only just to go for the free basic membership, but um, Try out our premium features because then you really open the door to a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different cool features uh, that premium members have in terms of uh, custom views, uh, 
watch lists or uh, emails that it can be sent to you. Would you agree with me on that one, Jean? Sure, yeah. So, John, let me ask or answer one other question that has come up uh, a few times during today's session. Um, people are asking how long the quote delay is during market hours. And um, John was showing you, he was he was primarily on US equities pages today, and he started off today showing you how uh, there's this little flashing um, on the prices and, and the volume and the, and the timestamp to show you that the data is actually updating. So during market hours, um, if you see those flashes, we are delivering real-time data from the CBOE BZX exchange uh, when it's available. So those are updates that are happening in real time. All other stocks that where there is no CBOE real-time data available, there's going to be a 15-minute delay on those. Um, futures and Forex is either 10 or a 15-minute delay based on uh, the exchange regulations. So you know, they, the the site does update with the data, but it may be delayed. It may be real time, depending on what you're looking for. So I do know the futures is a delay. Was it 10 minutes or 15 minutes? You remember? And that's a 10 minute delay, John. All right. Does that say that in our help section here? I believe it does. Doesn't it? It's at the very, very bottom of the the website. Right, right there. You've you've got it right there. Okay. Um, what else? The, the only other thing I would say is that, yeah, if if you have specific questions, I've got a lot of people asking me questions about options, which we're really not covering in today's uh, session at all. But if you have questions on options, please email support. They'll be happy to help you out there. But we have plenty of options. Um, data pages, right? And one of our more popular pages is our unusual options activity page. Okay. Well, if that's it. I don't have anything else to add, Jean. Thanks so much for your support today. I appreciate your time and effort. And I want to wish everybody the best of health. Be safe out there and the good of all trading.